Hi, this is Dina for Split Coast Stampers. In this tutorial, I'll share how I made this sky view scene using inks, stamps, and stencils. I've got a panel of Nina Classic Crest cover stock here. And the first thing I want to do is mask a circle for the moon in my scene. This mask is from a set by A Colorful Life Designs, but you can die cut a sticky note or masking paper too. I've chosen three hybrid inks for my sky in light, medium, and dark colors. I'm starting here with my lightest ink and just rushing lightly around the moon. You can see that I'm using a gentle touch and not worrying about a super even blend, just getting color down on the panel, and that unevenness will add to the texture of the clouds later. Next I'll go in with my medium color a little further away from the moon using the same light touch. And finally, I'll blend with my darkest color at the bottom of the panel and out around the edges. You can really position your moon wherever you want to on the panel, but since I'm going to be adding trees, this upper central position works best. Next, I'm going to add clouds to my scene, beginning with a ring around the moon. And I'm using my medium color ink for this step, just lightly brushing the edge of the cloud mask to create a little contrast. I'm using the Cloud Edger stencil set from A Colorful Life Designs, which has all these great different edges on it, so you can create a lot of variety in your clouds just by giving the mask a little turn each time and lining it up to do the next section. If you don't have a stencil set, you can cut your own, or you can use a scalloped die cut or punch. On the photo tutorial, I've got a link to another tutorial where I show how that looks. So stencil the initial ring, and then you can create additional rings to fill in the rest of the space. Next, I want to create some rays around my moon. You can use a stencil to do this or just a straight paper edge. I'm going to work my way around the moon keeping the edge of the paper centered on the moon and brushing ink over one side and then rotating the paper a little each time to create rays around the moon. I'm rotating in sort of even increments, but it doesn't need to be perfect at all. You can even leave this step out if you want. It's a really subtle effect, but I think it adds some depth to the sky. The stencil set I'm using has the positive and negative cuts. So for the next step, I'm going to be using the outer piece. If I didn't have this piece, I would use a white colored pencil to highlight the edges of the clouds. So that would be another option for this step, or you could omit this step if you want. Because I have this stencil, I'm going to go around and stipple some craft paint on the edges of the clouds to give them a stronger highlight. I'm using a blending brush with the craft paint and tapping almost all of the paint out of the brush so I don't get paint squished under the edge of the stencil and then tapping very lightly on the panel to get the paint where I want it. The edge of the stencil is really close to the design so I've got my little paper there to prevent any overflow and I'll just keep going around the card to highlight the rest of the cloud edges. If you use your blender brush with paint, be sure to rinse it out right away so it doesn't get crusty in there. Next, I'm going to remove the moon mask and do some paint splattering to add some stars or snow, whatever your interpretation is. The splatters on this paper will also add some texture to the moon, which we want for a later step. You can add as many or a few splatters as you like. And you can see I'm diluting the paint I used earlier, rolling my brush in the paint, 
and then tapping the brush against my finger to get it to splatter onto my card and beyond if we're honest. If you want some more controlled dots, you can dip the end of your paintbrush into the paint or use a ball stylus or any other pointed tool to dot the paint onto your card. Next, I want my scene to look like I'm standing in a forest and looking up at the moon. So I'm going to stamp some trees with the moon as my central focal point. I've got a tall pine tree from Stampscapes and I'm going to position and stamp that centrally at the bottom of the card pointing toward the moon. And I'm using Versafine ink because I know that it will dry on top of my paint. I'm eyeballing the position of the moon and I want to keep that generally in the same place as I rotate my card. And I'll keep rotating and stamping around the panel with the moon in about the same place. It was really helpful to have the magnet centered in the moon, and once I figured that out, it was very easy to rotate the panel in place. You may need to make some adjustments to the position of your card when you go around the top. Just pay attention to where the bottom of your card is compared to the hinge side of your positioner so you don't accidentally fold it. And then just keep stamping and filling in until you have the fullness and the look that you want in your forest. I wanted a little more fullness toward the bottom of my card, so I pulled out another tree stamp and I stamped that one a few times just to fill in the space a little more. The final step here is to highlight the texture on the moon with a little gray ink. I just used what I had left in my blender brush and brushed in the center of the moon and that picked up the texture quite nicely. The last step is to heat set the ink, especially where it's sitting on top of the paint. And here's my finished card. All I did here was add the sentiment on a die cut tag, super simple. Here's another card that I made using warm colors to create a sunny scene. On this card, I stenciled the rays, and instead of trees, I have this stenciled butterfly. I look forward to seeing your scenes in the gallery. I have some more there too. Thank you so much for watching.